Children's Church. I'm so glad to have you here with me. And today we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Or, as one of the resources I posted today called it, we've got the Spirit! So we do. All we have to do is ask. So last week we talked about Pentecost. It was the day we celebrate Pentecost, which is the day the Holy Spirit came down to the people waiting in the upper room. They waited for 10 days, praying and waiting for the helper Jesus said was coming. And then they went outside and Peter preached the sermon. It was a really good sermon where he took all of the things and all the prophecies from the Old Testament and applied them to what Jesus had done, is doing, and will do. Because remember, Jesus is past, present, and future tense. He's eternal. He came back to life and he stepped outside of time. He is, was, and it is what will be. So how do we get the Holy Spirit now, 2,000 years later? You ask. It's that simple. The Holy Spirit is part of the three parts that make up God. I'm doing a triangle. Because that's how I was taught it. <laughs> three sides of the triangle we have. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Here's your little triangle. We ask. We ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We ask God to guide us and stay with us and help us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. It's the little voice inside your head that warns you when something's wrong. And it's also the sense of peace. When I'm trying to decide to do something, I always pray the same thing. I ask the peace of God to guide me. Because I don't know if you guys know this about Miss Mandy, but I do not naturally have a lot of peace. I'm a little high strung. So I know when I have a very sudden sense of peace fall over my shoulders about a decision that I'm following God's path. So that's something I pray very often and that's how the Holy Spirit helps me. When a lot of people talk about the Holy Spirit in our times, they're talking about the Holy Spirit warning them or guiding them to make the right decision or stay away from the wrong decision. I could give you a lot of examples, but I can't think of one right now. Well, no, I can think of a few, but they're all kind of scary, so I don't want to use them. <laughs> so here are the ways that the Holy Spirit comes to us. We ask, we pray for it. And a lot of times it happens when we're in church and the Holy Spirit comes because God dwells in the praises of his people. Now you guys hear Pastor Jim say that all of the time. What does it mean? To dwell is to be in a place to inhabit. That's not more helpful, Miss Mandy. Occupy. Occupy. That works. You're occupying the space. Your house is also called your dwelling. It's where you reside. So when the people of God are praising, that's where God's spirit is. So a lot of times it's easiest to be filled with the Holy Spirit at a time like that, when everyone's together and God is dwelling with us. God is always dwelling with us. It's really more or less how aware of it we are rather than where God is. Because God is always with us. We just have to reach out and ask. How do we ask? Number one, pray. You just ask God. You don't have a special formula or a special prayer. God wants to hear from you your words from your heart. If that's a little too intimidating, you could say something like, Dear Jesus, I ask that the Holy Spirit enters my heart to guide me and help me. And I would like to maybe speak in tongues like they do in the story of Pentecost. You just ask. You ask Jesus and then you kind of stay in that place. You dwell with God. And what I think is most interesting about the Holy Spirit is you have to ask. That's never going to happen to you when you don't want it to. You have to reach out and touch God's hand back. If you guys have ever seen that painting, um, it's actually supposed to be God breathing life into Adam. But it's their hands just a little bit further apart. God is always reaching for us. To get the Holy Spirit, all we have to do is reach back with our hands and our hearts. 
So the gifts of the Spirit are tongues, which is speaking a language you don't know, prophecy, which is speaking things God says. We talk a lot about prophets in the Bible, but people still prophesy today. Interpretation. If you guys remember Daniel in the Bible, he was the interpreter for the king, and he interpreted his dreams that warned of famine and warned of what would happen to the king for disrespecting God. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And discernment, which is seeing the truth in situations. Not necessarily seeing what's going to happen, just understanding what's true and what is happening. Those are the ones I want to cover with you guys today. That's what we're talking about. We have the Spirit. All we have to do is reach out with our hands and our hearts. And God will reach back. That's what I wanted to talk about today. We've got the spirit. Yes, we do. I've got the spirit. How about you? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was silly. I'll see you guys next week for another lesson from the book of Acts. Bye. Bye.